Mole calculations is an area of available chemistry that people get really quite kind of scared and helped about. And actually, there is no need to, to panic. There's only really four equations that we need, and we need to be able to follow through some logical steps. And hopefully, when you uh, get good at that and practice it, and all the pieces fall into place, you'll feel really confident going into your exams on this topic. So let's go through those four equations and actually look at how they can apply to some exam questions. So my first equation, which we need to um, we need to know for this area, is about mass. So if you're weighing out a solid, we can calculate the number of moles of, of that solid by doing its mass divided by its molecular or formula mass. Our second equation is all about concentrations. So moles equals a substance's um, concentration times its volume. Our third equation is about volumes. So the number of moles of a gas, I should say an ideal gas, at room temperature pressure is its volume divided by 24. And finally, our ideal gas equation, which is related to this one, but it gives it under a wider range of condition, is PV equals NRT. So if you uh, can remember these four equations, um, can remember some of the units, we should hopefully be able to work through some problems. The first thing to say is that we like to measure uh, concentrations in moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, one decimeter cubed is the same as a liter. It's quite a conv convenient volume. We can kind of relate to it quite easily. So, if your concentration is in moles per decimeter cubed, volumes here must be in decimeter cubed too. Okay, and that applies to this example here and to uh, uh, formula three here. However, in the bottom equation, pressure times volume equals the number of moles times uh, the gas constant times temperature. Pressure is measured in pascals. Okay, the proper way to write out pascals is newtons per meter squared. What that means is your volume here needs to be in meters cubed. So to be really aware that in our two equations here, um, our volume is going to be in decimeters cubed, whereas for the ideal gas equation, we normally uh, work in meters squared, meters cubed. Okay, without further ado, let's go through some questions and we'll have a look at how we get on. So our first question here, calculate the concentration in moles per decimeter cube of the solution formed when 19.6 grams of hydrogen chloride are dissolved in water and the volume made up 250 centimeters cubed. So the first thing uh, we need to spot here is the number of marks. It's actually a three mark question. And what that implies to me is it's not going to be a straightforward, simple uh, single calculation. So what have we got? We've got a mass of hydrogen chloride um, and then a volume. Okay, there is no formula here with both mass and volume in. So actually, let's break it down. The first thing we're going to do is use formula one. Okay, so we're given the mass. Okay, so we're going to do moles equals the mass divided by MR, 19.6. Then we're simply going to work out the formula mass of HCl. Okay, which is going to be one plus 35.5 and if I do this on my calculator left over here I get 0.6 divided by 36.5 0.537 okay when you um, are halfway through a calculation it's really, really good practice to actually store the answer you get to make your final answer more accurate. And the way to do that on your calculator, shift, and then stow at the bottom left here, and then pick a letter. So this answer is now stored as A. So this is giving me the number of moles. What I um, now need to do um, is to calculate the concentration of the solution once it's made up to 250 centimeters cubed. Okay, so the second step in this question is gonna to be to use the equation, um, equation two. I'm gonna rearrange it so that conch equals uh, moles divided by volume. The number of moles hasn't changed. I've still got this many moles, which I'm uh, dissolving up into the solution. So it's going to be 0.537, which remember I've stored as A, divided by the volume. Okay, It's telling me 250 centimetre cubed. 
to convert that into decimeter cube, I need to divide by 1000. So it's over 250 or over 1000. So I've already got that stored as A, so I can now just do A divided by 250 divided by 1000. And I get 2.15 and it's concentration, so it's giving me moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, so straightforward question, it's just broken up into two sections. This seems reasonable, about two molar solution sound seems about right to me. Um, so I'm quite happy, uh, quite confident with that one. Question number two. Um, it was actually the second part of the same question. Uh, it tells us the carbonate of metal M has a formula M2CO3, okay, where M is unknown. The equation for the reaction of this carbonate with hydrochloric acid is given below. So this time I'm going to have to, I'm assuming I'm going to have to use this equation um, to actually work out uh, ratios and moles. A sample of M2CO3 has a mass of 0.394 grams, and I needed 21.7 centimeter cubed of a 0.263 mole per decimeter cubed solution of hydrochloric acid for a complete reaction. A lot of information here. Let's break it up when we look at the questions. One, calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid used. Okay, number of moles of hydrochloric acid used. Okay, so my hydrochloric acid here is here. It's got a volume of 21.7 centimeter cubed, a concentration of 0.263. So I'm going to be using equation number two here. Okay, so moles equals comp times vol. Concentration, 0.263. Volume, 21.7 over 1,000. Which is 0.263 times 21.7 over 1,000. And 0.0057. One mole per decimeter cubed. Sorry, it's a number of moles, just moles. Okay, notice here that I've given my answer to three significant figures. It's really good practice to always do that, um, especially if in your question all of the um, um, numbers you were given are to three sig figs. Always try and give your answers to three sig figs. But again, just in case I need this later on, I'm going to store that as A. Okay, and I'm actually even going to annotate on here that I've stored that as A just to help me remember. Next one, calculate the number of moles of M2CO3 in, in 0.394 grams. Okay, this time, I actually can't use any of my equations from here. Okay, I do not know enough about M2CO3. I do not know it's MR, so I cannot work out the moles using equation one. But what I'm told is that this is the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that are reacting with M2CO3. So I actually have to use my equation. Okay, and what this equation is telling me is that for, if, if I were to react... Uh, two moles of hydrochloric acid that would react with one mole of my carbonate okay so what I need to do is actually use this number and do a ratio so I would write ratio of HCl to M2CO3 is 2 to 1 therefore to get from this number of moles to the moles of M2CO3 I need to divide this number by 2 so therefore 0.00571 divided by 2. So again, I've got this already in my calculator. Divided by 2 is 0.00285 moles. Next one, calculate the relative formula mass. That's the MR of M2CO3. Okay, so finally now, I've got the number of moles of my carbonate. Therefore, I can work out the MR now. So this is going to be using equation one and rearranging it to have MR equals um, mass divided by moles. Okay, I've already got that in my calculator. In fact, I'm going to store it as B just in case I lose it. Okay, the mass I was told is 0.394. And divided by 0.00285, which gives me an answer of... 138. So that's the MR of this entire compound. The next question is asking me to deduce the relative atomic mass of M and hence suggest its identity. 
Right, so 138 is this whole carbonate here. Okay, so 138 is the MR of M2CO3. I don't know what M is, that's what I'm trying to work out, but I do know that carbon is 12, oxygen is 16. So I'm going to um, subtract the atomic masses of those um, um, of those four atoms there from my overall forming mass. I'm going to do minus 16 times 3 minus 12 carbon. Okay, and I'm left over, and I'm told that M, that M2, so two atoms of M, has got a, uh, a, a mass of 78, which means that M must have a mass of 39. This is actually going to be the atomic mass now, so it's going to be AR of M is 39. And if you look at your periodic table, you should find out that that is the atomic mass of potassium K. Okay, so six marks for that question. It's really um, handy in that it breaks it all down for you. Um, have a look through that. Um, there's nothing so complicated than that, but remember you have to use the equation okay, and use the stoichiometry as the ratio of the reactants to work that one out.